Good morning. morning. When we're all together, we can really fill up a room. And I know a lot of folks that aren't here today, so um, that's that's really awesome. Uh, Just want to say, on today, Roger's final day, um, it is an honor for me to fill in for you. Thank you. Let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God and Father, we thank you for. uh, this day and, and the day that we could gather and worship. Lord, we just pray that our hearts are surrendered. My heart is surrendered to you, to your speaking, to your spirit, speaking through me, and that each and every heart and mind in this place is also surrendered to you. Um, we put you first, Lord. Uh, the reason that we're here is to follow you, and, and we want to listen to you right now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, um, there was a a ship engine that went down. And, you know, a big ship. And it it could fill half this room. It was so big. And it went down and no one could fix it. And so they took it out of the ship even. And they they called all, all that they knew how to fix it. And uh, no one was getting it. No one could figure it out. And people were crawling all over it, and nobody could figure out why this ship engine... You know, they're, they're just too big to replace. They're too expensive. And um, finally, they found this, this old fella, this old mechanic, been doing it for years and years, and they said, well, maybe he could do it. And they, they called him in, and, and he crawled all over that thing that... Uh, you know, dozens of people, mechanics had already been over, and he crawled all over that thing, and he took a ball-peen hammer, and he struck it in one spot, and the thing fired up. (laughs) And they're like, wow, that that guy really knows his stuff. He's like, yep, that ought to do it. It'll be fine now. You can put it back in the ship. Well, he sent the bill, and it was $10,000. And the the owner of the ship said, $10,000, I'm going to need an itemized list on this because I'm pretty sure all you did was strike it with a hammer. And um, he goes, yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll strike it with, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get you an itemized bill. So the bill came in and um, it said, smacking engine with a hammer, $2, knowing where to strike, (laughs) $9,998. And, you know, when I read that story, I was like, that's Roger right there. Because I don't know how many Bible studies I've been in, Bible studies, the shepherds meeting. And, I mean, we constantly deal with heavy issues, issues where we immediately say, what's the word say? Where we immediately say, what's God telling us? And in Bible studies where people are perplexed about verses and different things, and Roger just always has that way of kind of sitting back in his chair like this, just kind of leaning back, just taking it all in, lets us all fret it out a while, and then he strikes the hammer and says, well, actually, this is what God says. <laughs> and we all go, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so I, I just picture Roger like that, that ship mechanic of knowing exactly where to strike and and it reminds me of the verse of the man that's that can divide the truth um divide the word and that's kind of a if you haven't studied that verse there's a lot to it it's it seems simple but there's actually a lot to it but when you do study it that's that's a picture of roger he divides the truth from the word of god you know and we're going to uh we're going to miss his characteristics Roger, um, of course, is an awesome preacher, always has been. I've talked to a lot of people over the years. We've been here 19 years, and I've talked to a lot of people over the years that maybe visited and didn't come back, or maybe they left, and then I would see them later. And, you know, what? You know, how did you like our church? And without exception, you know, there was something maybe they didn't like that much, but they always said, but your preacher was great. Really like the preaching, but you know we, we, we found somewhere else because that's Roger's gift. 
Roger also, also has the gift of uh, counseling. And I don't know if you, many in the room, have, have, have probably gotten that from Roger, either formally or informally. And he's very gifted at that. And we're going to miss that about Roger. And, you know, he's also very gifted at um, assessing your strengths and knowing what your purpose is in the kingdom. Roger can pick that out in people. And Roger would always have a way of going to you and saying, hey, I think you would be good at this ministry and maybe even heading this ministry up. And we're going we're gonna to miss that about Roger as well because that's important. Sometimes we don't know what we're good at ourselves. And Roger could always pick that out. And it, it reminds me that this, these are the, the simple truths that I'm going to miss about Roger. One time Joe Allen and I were talking about doing a Bible study uh, for young men. And, and uh, I've been doing the Thursday morning Bible study for years. And so I thought, well, I'll see what Roger thinks. And I said, hey, Roger, would, would you pray about Joe Allen and I uh, doing a Bible study with some young guys we got together? And Roger goes, I don't have to pray about that. And I'm thinking, well, we're supposed to pray about everything. And I go, oh, you're, you're, you are you will not pray about that? And he goes, no, I'm sure you're supposed to study the Bible. Go, <laughs> go ahead and do that. I was like, good. That was a good one. Good, I'll do that. <clears throat> but those are just a few things I'm going to miss about Roger being uh, here at the pulpit. And I know uh, at the brunch today, uh, we're all going to get to share um, stories about Roger and, and, and fellowship together and celebrate um, Roger's 20 plus years here with us. And um, so you'll, you'll get your chance. I just got my chance early because I got a microphone. So um, we'll, we'll get to celebrate that. And, but today is a little uh, bittersweet. Like, and, you know, I give you my word. I've been pretty much gone for three weeks. Mark and I did not speak. But my sermon is going to be a total reflection of your communion uh, meditation. So I think the Spirit is at work today. Um, but we're just going to throw it down, people. We're all together. Both services are here. We're going to ask the hard question today, and we're going to deal with it. What does it look like, and how can the church survive without Roger being our pastor? You know, we've, we've mentioned it in, in sermons, and we've been talking about it from the, from the um, shepherd's moment, from the pulpit. Uh, but there's a few key things that we need to really get straight because what Mark said is true. It, it's the national average when a, a longtime pastor leaves the church, about 25% go. And, and I'm sure there's lots of reasons for that, but I think there's, there's some things that we can do to minimize that and get our own selves straight um, so that doesn't happen to us. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, we, we have to get this right because it, it can be so bad. Um, we don't like to say this word. We don't even want to think about this. But churches split over these things. If we don't have this right, churches split over these things. And so we want to have this right because I believe what Mark said is we're all, we're all praying to the same God. We all are surrendered to the same God. And so it's a matter of us getting ourselves right with his spirit. And so that doesn't happen to us. But for sure, it leaves us with uncertainty, doesn't it? I mean, the shepherds have been telling you things from the shepherd's moment, mostly Don, um, giving you the information that we have, giving you the information that we talk about trying to give you the information so that you can stay up to speed. That's what those things are about. But there's, there's a few things that we're going to talk about today that maybe you don't get from the moment. And that the first one is, is we've got to understand who is the head of the church. And it, with a, when a longtime preacher like Roger leaves, it's easy to get that confused sometimes. Roger is not the head of this church nor a new pastor, nor Matt, 
or the shepherds or any of us are not the head of the church. The head of the church is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're here for. That's who we, that's why we come. That's why we come. Ephesians 5.23 says, and I'm just going to read a piece out of there. It says, Christ is the head of the church. There's no other reason that you came today or should be other than you want to get closer to Jesus Christ. That's why you should be here today. He is the head. When we get that confused, everybody has their own ideas and opinions, and then things can get muddled really quickly if we're not really laser-focused on why we're here. And it's Christ. And in Colossians 2.10, it says, He is the head over every power and authority. Every power and authority. That means Satan and his evil designs and, and ploys that he does. And Mark said it so good this, this morning. His job is to kill, divide, destroy. That's what he's here for. And, that, and what an opportunity for him when people are uncertain about what's going to happen next. He just jumps on an opportunity like that. Divide, kill, and destroy. That's what Satan is about. But Christ is over every power, every authority. If we are totally surrendered to Christ, those, those arrows, those darts can't affect us. They cannot affect us, but we've got to have that right. And, you know, I, I know most of the people in this room. I, I think I know where you're at on, on that, though I haven't had that conversation with all of you or even most of you. But I, I think I know where, where you're at with that. But you see, it gets, we, we get so easy, that gets lost quickly, doesn't it? In just day-to-day -day struggle, providing for your family, your job, what, all the things that you do, you quickly lose sight of what's the very most important thing. Well, when we walk in these doors, we should, re we should remember very quickly what the most important thing is, and that is Christ is our head. And he comes before all things, and he comes before all our thoughts, all our desires, the things that we wish really could be different about the church, um, but maybe we haven't talked to the right person, maybe we haven't pushed it. It comes before all of that. That's secondary. He is the head. And you know, um, the church actually means the called out ones. It means the assembly. We are the church. And, I, and I, I, we talked about that a few months ago in a sermon I did that, you know, we typically think of the church as this building. The church is not the building at all. We have that really wrong if and I know it comes out of our mouth without us thinking that, but the church is the body of believers. And the Bible says that it is the bride of Christ. And so we we got to get we got to sort this out. Jana and I uh, yesterday were at Lainey Cathcart's wedding, and um, I got to see it from a new perspective because it was the first ceremony that I got to do. It was it was really fun, but I got to see the ceremony from a new perspective. You know, and we were there the day before when, when the practice took place, and so we were around the wedding party, we were around the parents and the grandparents, and it just reminded me, you guys are all familiar with weddings, but it just reminded me, I mean, that whole weekend is about Lainey and just getting her prepared for that moment. You know, that's it's what it's about. And Chance, her, her, her husband now is a really neat kid, and I had time, time to talk to him a few times, and, and he was saying all the right stuff. You know, Nettie, Nettie Laney's mom would say something, and Chance would say, yes, but, but yes, ma'am, whatever you say. That's... <laughs> and I, I, on a couple occasions, I said, you got it right. <laughs> Keep saying that. You're going to be saying that for the next several years. Um, but... I mean, that, because he recognizes too. In fact, he told me that. He goes, I realize today is not about me. It's, this is all for Lainey. And I said, you are right. You are dead on. But do we treat ourselves like that? Do we take en enough time and attention to the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, that we're ready for Christ when he shows up? 
the Bible talks, Revelation talks about the church is, is preparing like a bride for her groom. You know, and we should be preparing for the groom every Sunday when we come here because we're in the presence of the groom right now. The bride is in the presence of the groom. We should be putting that kind of attention into our groom if we're going to be the bride. And we are that. We are that. We should be putting that kind of attention into that. And, you know, when um, the, the wedding was outside and... and uh, it was a long way from the building. And Chance and I stood up before the front, and you know, now there's 200 people looking at us, and, and I could just feel the tension coming from Chance. And, and so I, I, I kind of leaned over, I said, are you nervous? And he goes, well, I wasn't until now. <laughs> and the first wedding party took like 14 minutes to get down there, it seemed like. And then the second one started, we're like, well, this is going to be a while. And, uh, and so we're both going, you know, this, yeah, this is uncomfortable. And uh, then they figured it out, and they started coming quicker. But I leaned over, and I told Chance, I said, Chance, don't be nervous. Everyone here is your friend. You invited them because they're your friends. So you don't have to be nervous. But you see, it's not like that with Christ. Christ, the groom is not nervous about his bride. He set it up that way. That's our humanness, where we're nervous about different things and maybe the, the groom coming, but that's the way he set it up. It's the exact opposite of, of, of that. Christ is waiting for his bride. He is so excited to see her, and that's how he treats the church. And I think sometimes we forget to act like that. We are the bride of Christ, and, and we should really act like that. And what if we get that straight in our mind of what we're really here for, again, what Mark was saying, that's where the unity will come from. That's where unity in the church will come from if we all understand really what we're here for and what we're committed to. That's what we need to be doing. And you might say, what's that look like, though? What, is it, what does it look like to be unified in Christ? Well, it means every one of us in this building are totally surrendered. We have to surrender to him. And that doesn't happen even on a daily basis. Sometimes that takes several times an hour to surrender to Christ. And if we all of our hearts are surrendered, and you know, that's one reason that we, we from the, the shepherd's moment, we've been asking you guys to pray. Pray for this transition, that we can all be unified. Because there's one spirit, the Bible's clear about that, there's one spirit, and we should all be listening to that same spirit. So if we're all praying, we'll all eventually get on the same page with things. But we have to make that effort. We have to take the effort to pray. And, you know, if there's something, well, again, my, my sermon's tailor-made for, for Mark's presentation. It, you have to ask yourself, what spirit am I listening to? If you find yourself in a place that's contradictory to the Bible. Or not, well, the Bible, yeah, but also the body. You have, you'll have to ask yourself, am Am, am I really listening to the right spirits? Because the Bible is clear about that. Because sometimes our selfishness does sneak in and say, well, I wish things were different. And so I might start talking to people about that. Because I, I, I really wish things were different here. Well, it's not saying that they, they may not should be. But there's a, there's a way to do that. And the first, the first way to do that is keep in prayer. You know, I'm so thankful for Sammy and her group that has been praying consistently for the transition. Um, she's got a group of, of folks that have been meeting up here, and their, their purpose is to pray about this transition. Those are the kinds of things that will unify us. And we need to do more of that, I think. You know, we need to do more of that, what gets us on the same page. And we also need to realize that 
everything that we're going through, what this church will look like in six months, what it will look like in a year, five years, is no surprise to God. You know, I, I, I think I said this in the last sermon. I, I really like it. God has never said, huh, that never occurred to me. <laughs> He's never said that because he knows the beginning from the end. He knows exactly what we're going through. He knows exactly where we're going, where, when we'll get there. And so we can find peace in that. We don't have to fight the battle. We don't have to fight the struggle. He already knows we can have peace. Now, sure, there's going to be conversation. There's going to be things that look different. But we need to accept that God's already got it under control. God already knows what the end of this looks like. And so why should I fret about it? You know, the Bible says fretting does not add one minute to your life. In Romans 8, uh, verse 28 says, All things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All this is going to work together for our good. And we just need to trust that. And I know it's so easy then, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about this? And that's when our own ideas and intentions start creeping back in. And, and then we, we start pushing that, and then, and then things start getting scattered again. But we can't do that. We have to realize that all things work for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And that God is sovereign. He knows the ministries that we're responsible for. He oversees those ministries. He wants them to work more than we do. All we got to do is kind of get out of the way and let him do that. Uh, Second, or, yeah, Second Corinthians 2.14, Paul said, But thanks be to God, who in Christ also leads us in a triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of knowledge to him everywhere. That's what God's purpose is, is to use this church, just like Paul's church that he was talking to, to spread the fragrance and the knowledge everywhere. We don't have to, we can be solid on that fact too. That's what God wants to do with us. And we just need to accept his direction and leading. And sometimes we do need to accept it because it, it might be a bit different than the way we think or the way we were raised. Um, or some of the authors that we're reading, other than the Bible. It might be a bit contrary. But you guys really need to know, I, I just can't say this enough, the shepherds just bathe everything in prayer. And every difficult situation that comes in that meeting room, uh, guys, let, let's pray about this. We... Because we want to do it God's way. And sometimes our, even our own intentions and, and ideas and misconceptions get in the way. And so we want to pray about that. And, and you know what that does? I, for one thing, I know because I used to be on the outside of that group too. And so a lot of times you kind of think, what are they doing? What are they thinking? You know, is anything getting done? Well, sometimes it takes a while because we are praying about matters that really matter and it does take a week or two because sometimes we come back and sometimes we say you know what i'm not done praying about that or sometimes we're not unified and so we continue to pray so sometimes it, it does take longer but i know you guys aren't in those meetings so you might have a different perception of that and it's that's understandable but realize the point i'm making realize they don't want to do anything that is not led by God. And, and in, in a transition period like this, it's, it's even more important, and we understand that. And, and so sometimes we do, we do seem like we move slow, and sometimes we do move slow. Um, the third thing that the church might have to do is redefine its mission a little bit. Now, I, I realize that, you know, we're... Everybody in here can agree on the big things. I mean, we all know that we're supposed to preach the word. We're supposed to teach scripture. 
We're supposed to worship, glorify God. I mean, those, those are the easy things. But sometimes God has called a church to be something specific. And, you know, not, not that this, the whole list pertains to this body, but you might, it's, something might strike with you. Like, the church might be about um, helping the needs of, of the poor in, in the city. It might be helping the needs of the elderly. It might be helping the needs of the young people. It might be, um, you know, maybe there's a soup kitchen downtown that, that it's geared to help and, and lift those people up. There's lots of different outreaches and, and things that a church can be doing. Um, and and when, when Roger steps away, I think it would be good that we, that's what, one thing that we put on the prayer list is really what are we good at and what it, what is the focus God wants us to have? And, but I, I guess the biggest thing we need to ask ourselves, though, is what are we doing? You know, are we making disciples? Are we baptizing folks? Are we meeting the needs of other people in this community? And maybe there's, maybe there's some things that we need to step up. Um, we might not be doing all that we can do. We, no, we might not be doing all that God has called us to do. We could do more. And, and I think during the t- time of transition, it's good to get that straight and, and communicated with everyone because that's where those different ideas can start moving. And r- really, truly, I, there's a, there is a perception, and we're aware of it, that for some folks that the elders are hard to approach. And we may be, and we may, we may need to be better at that for sure, but it's not because we want to be. I'll guarantee you that. And we, we definitely do want to talk to you individually. That's one thing that we believe in. Um, and so please come and talk to an elder if you're wondering about anything. You know, and, and that's... And that's one thing, when, when we started down this path, we said, you know, we got to get, we got to communicate better. And that's when Don started putting the, the, um, the, sh- the shepherd's moment together. And then he started emailing that too, so we could just get it out to more folks. But I, I know that's two pieces. There could be more things that you're wondering about. There could be more things that you're concerned about. And break whatever that is that stops you from coming to talk to one of the elders. Because we, we might have that perception. That could be real perception. It probably is. But it's definitely not what we want to be. And we, we want to talk to you if you've got some concerns. I've had those conversations with lots of people. But we realize this is, and from being an educator, I know this very well, one of the most difficult things to do is... Be, deal with conflict. And so what tends to happen is if the conversation is gonna, going to be conflict, it's really easy to put that thing off, isn't it? In fact, what it's really easy to do is tell somebody else. And then we go down the gossip road. And then things start, the, things start coming off the tracks, and that's where it can go wrong. And that's why we, it's really important that you come and talk to us and face that difficult conversation if that's what it is. Because we don't want to be the church that loses 25% when Roger leaves. And even if it is a difficult conversation, you know what, every one I've ever had, I walked away going, man, I feel better. Whether it was I had to present a difficult conversation or somebody had to present it to me, you clear that out and you feel better. And that's the way the Bible says to do it, is go to your brother and talk to them. And we need to, we need to be better about that other than, you know, just, just telling somebody else around us. And, and those conversations really have already started, or, or some have, and, and we need to continue that. Ephesians 4, 11 uh, through 13 says, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers 
to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the, to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You know, you know, when I read that, I think back to being the bride, getting prepared. God has already appointed us to be all those things. Number one, if we're to operate efficiently, we need to be doing the thing that God gave us to do. We need to realize what our calling out is as a church and individually, and we need to be doing that. And we need to be surrendering to his spirit that he can prepare his people for works of service. That's what he wants to do. That's what we're here today for, is to get prepared for works of service. And that builds unity, as the verse says. We build unity in faith by doing that. And then we become mature. And I, I, I really got to say this, through this transition period, the devil is going to take shots. He already has. We all have to bind together and be mature in our faith. We've got to do that. We've got to do the most that we can do in being mature in our faith that Satan can't get a foothold in this place. We really have to do that. And to the fullness of Christ. Now, I know we'll never get to the fullness of Christ on this planet, probably, but we know that's where we're all headed. That's, that's why you came today, is to get a little fuller of Christ. I hope that's why you came today. I think one of the most important things through this whole process, for sure, shepherds agree, is communication. And, and we're going to try to be that for you, and we want you to be that back with us. And I, I think if we can stay on that page, communicate, and share those difficult conversations, and you might not agree, but at least you'll understand where the shepherds are coming from if, if you have that conversation. You'll understand why we made a decision like we did. If we have that conversation, don't be afraid to have those conversations. Okay, I know that was, that was heavy. And just like Mark said, it, it is uncertainty and it can feel heavy. But look how much we have to look forward to. God has something. God, there, there's a season for everything. And Roger had a great season here. And we got to enjoy it for over 20 years. And, and it's going to be tough to say goodbye to Roger. But we're, and we're going to celebrate Roger and make it easier today. But there's going to be a new season. There's going to be a new season. The Bible says that he renews it each and every day. And we're going to have a new season in our church and something that we're all going to love again. And we just need to be looking forward to that and walking in it together. We're going to do that. Pray with me, please. God and Father, Lord, we thank you um, for today. And, and again, just all that Roger has meant to this church, Lord, we just praise you that you gave Roger to this church for 20 plus years and, and, and we have just been the, the beneficiaries of that. We just thank you so much. And, and for the weeks and months to come for Roger and Karen, we just pray your blessing upon them. It's going to be different for, for Roger too. And we just pray that your spirit would be poured out and not only leading this church in the best direction, but also leading Roger and Karen in, in the direction that you have chosen for them. And Lord, we know your spirit, it's all about you. Jesus, forgive us when we make it about other things and we're so quickly to get off track. Um, it's all about you. And we just pray that um, in, the, in the weeks and months to come, the main thing would happen and, that, and that's you are glorified. Thank you, Lord. And uh, we give you the, the uh, reception.
to come as well, that every conversation and, and every joyous occasion could be um, blessed by your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.